Germany's V-1 and V-2 rockets. Warfare breeds innovation, and the German military of World War II was on the forefront of technological development, creating a myriad of new technologies that revolutionized warfare. Among the most well-known of these were the infamous V-1 and V-2 rockets, some of the most innovative and destructive weapons devised by Nazi scientists. As early as 1942, the German military poured resources into development of Vergeltungswaffen, or vengeance weapons, as a way for Germany to strike back against Allied bombing raids over Germany. Under the leadership of Werner von Braun, two distinct rocket-based munitions were created and unleashed on the Allies. At Simple History, you know we love learning about World War II. That's why when we watched the documentary D-Day, Price of Freedom on Magellan TV, we were blown away with the heart-wrenching true stories of those dramatic days, told by real people who were there at the time. Thanks to Magellan TV, we learned the true impact of what it felt like to stand on that famous beach on June 6, 1944. With over 20 hours of content and no ads to get in the way, we wanted to keep Magellan TV a secret all to ourselves. But this rising star in the streaming world is attracting attention no matter what we do. Probably because it's the best value of any documentary streaming service we've seen. And now the highest rated documentary streaming app on Google Play. Start your free trial and claim your special offer for Magellan TV today to get stuck into the drama with tons of new history content. The V1 the simplest of the two was the V-1 flying bomb. The V-1 was 25 feet in length, not including the engine which extends beyond the tail, with a wingspan of 20 feet. It weighed in at 4,800 pounds at launch, much heavier than anticipated, as many components were made from steel due to aluminum shortages. The V-1 was a precursor to the modern cruise missile being designated as a flying bomb. The weapon was self-propelled, its propulsion system consisting of a pulse jet engine which gave off a distinctive buzzing sound which gave it the nickname Buzz Bomb or Doodle Bug by the British. The engine required constant airflow and a minimum speed of 150 miles an hour to maintain ignition. To facilitate this, special launch catapults were built, mostly in Calais and occupied France. These catapults could launch the buzz bomb upwards of 200 miles an hour, at which point the engine would ignite. They could also be launched from aircraft, specifically Heinkel 111 bombers, though this was rare. The engine could propel the 25-foot-long V-1 at an average speed of around 365 miles per hour, though they have been recorded as traveling upwards of 420 miles per hour and a range of 125 miles. The V-1 contained a high-explosive warhead which weighed in at 1,875 pounds set to a pressure fuse. This would be armed mid-flight by a small propeller which would rotate as the missile cruised through the air, arming the warhead after a set number of rotations. The V-1 also contains a primitive guidance system of a gyroscope and a magnetic compass, its altitude corrected by a barometric altimeter. When the rocket neared its target, a spoiler at the rear of the projectile would deploy, slowing the speed and causing the nose to dip, interrupting the fuel supply, and the V-1 would crash to the ground, detonating on impact. Though the first flights of the V-1 occurred as early as 1942, it wasn't until 1944 when they were used in combat. Due to the inaccuracies of the guidance system, precision was next to impossible, meaning the V-1 was fired indiscriminately against large targets like cities. The first victim of the V-1 was the city of London. On June 13, 1944, the weapon launched from Calais in France. Until the end of the war, thousands of V-1s were launched, mostly at Britain, but a significant amount were sent towards the Belgian port of Antwerp in order to disrupt Allied shipping. Even as early as 1943, Allied espionage had learned about the V-weapon project, and strategic bombing targeted these sites, limiting the impact of the weapons. Of the ones that were launched, about two-thirds were shot down by anti-aircraft fire or fighter planes. The RAF made particular use of the Hawker Tempest, a craft that could fly fast enough to keep up with the V-1 in flight, though Spitfires and Hurricanes were also employed for this role. In addition to using their machine guns, pilots learned to use the wings of their planes to push the V-1 out of the sky. By placing their own wing about six inches under the wing of the missile, the air pressure differential would force the V-1 to roll too quickly for the gyroscope to compensate, sending it careening to the ground. A reported 16 rockets were destroyed this way. 
After a V-1 landed, German High Command would ask its agents in Britain to report on the effectiveness and to update the targeting data for future attacks. By this point, however, German spies had been discovered and either turned to double agents or were deliberately fed incorrect information. As a result, many V-1s fell short of their target after being given incorrect information. In spite of these efforts, about 800 V-1s struck London, with more buzz bombs hitting Antwerp. Over 6,000 were killed and 18,000 wounded by these munitions. The V-2 In addition to the V-1, the Germans also poured considerable resources into a larger and much more destructive rocket weapon. Designated the V-2, it dwarfed the V-1, weighing in at 29,000 pounds and containing a warhead of over 2,000 pounds of high explosives. At 46 feet in length, it was propelled by a liquid oxygen and alcohol water mixture, making it the first mass-produced liquid-fueled rocket. It also had a much more advanced guidance system than the V-1, including an integrated accelerometer, which measured the speed of the missile. Once that point was reached, the liquid engine would shut off, and the V-2 would continue on its arcing trajectory towards its target, which could be up to 190 miles away. Capable of reaching speeds of 3,600 miles per hour, the V-2 was impossible to shoot down with the fighter aircraft or anti-aircraft weapons of the time. It also flew much higher than any craft were capable of reaching, operating at a reported 60 miles of altitude, the first man-made object to leave the Earth's atmosphere. Development on the V-2 started in 1936 under the direction of Werner von Braun. The first test of the weapon occurred on October 3, 1942, but due to the complexities of production, it would be two years before they were fired in anger at the enemy. The first target of the V-2 was the city of Paris, which was struck on September 6, 1944, in retaliation after its liberation by Allied forces. Over the remaining months of the war, Germany would produce thousands of the weapons, especially at the underground production facility at Nordhausen. Labor was provided by the Mittelbau KL concentration camp, and over the course of the war, roughly 60,000 workers would be deported to the facility, where they expanded existing mines into an elaborate tunnel network to make room for the necessary fabrication plant. About half of all sent there would die in these conditions, with around 10,000 dying on V-2 production directly. From late 1944 until the end of the war, the Germans would launch around 2,000 at Britain and Belgium, particularly the port of Antwerp. As there was no method for stopping the rocket once it was launched, the only defense against the warhead was to stop it before launch. This was made difficult, however, as the V-2 didn't need a complex launch site, but rather a relatively small, easily hidden concrete slab. The other equipment necessary for launch could be transported separately. The weapon could be set up, launched, the launch pad hidden, and the equipment packed and evacuated quickly, leaving little for the Allied forces to find. As the Luftwaffe was decimated and Allies gained air superiority, the V-2 was utilized as a replacement for strategic bombers. In the last months of the war, V-2s rained down on Britain, with over 500 striking London. 2,700 Londoners would be killed, and the terror felt by the city's residents echoed that of the Blitz years before, when Luftwaffe aircraft bombarded civilian targets for months. There was fear that the rockets could potentially contain chemical or biological weapons. Plans were drawn up to evacuate a million residents of the city in order to mitigate the potential casualties. The V-2 was also employed in a more strategic role, as the Germans made preparations for the Ardennes Offensive in late 1944, Antwerp was given particular attention. This Belgian port was vital for the Allies, allowing supplies to be ferried to the continent from Britain. As German panzers maneuvered their way through the Ardennes in a secret counter-offensive, V-2 rockets rained down on Antwerp, hoping to disrupt the Allied logistical chain. With rear areas in disarray, German forces could punch through the Western Allied lines, stalling their advance and potentially allowing a negotiated peace. On December 16, 1944, as Nazi officials celebrated the success of the Weggeltungswaffen program, giving awards to von Braun and other scientists involved, a fusillade of V-2s were launched. One of these was aimed at Antwerp, where it struck a packed movie theater, killing 567, the largest loss of life from a single rocket in history. In spite of the destruction caused by the V-1s and V-2s, the Allied advance was inexorable. Though devastating, the destructive power wrought by these new weapons proved too little too late for the Reich. 
After Germany's surrender, top scientists such as von Braun were smuggled to the United States, while others were employed by the Soviet Union. During the Cold War, their talents would be utilized by these superpowers, paving the way for the development of each nation's intercontinental ballistic missile arsenals and playing a pivotal role in the space race, which would dominate the attention of both sides of the Iron Curtain for decades to come.